Okay. Uh, welcome back, day two. For those who didn't participate the previous day, so once again, the overview of the setup. So you can ask your questions and you can be interactive on the notes. You should have received already email from uh, Enrico with all the links over there. And then I will use my own sandbox. Here it's my own laptop and then on top of that there is another one screen which is uh, just echoes what i'm typing over here so that you see the exact commands and their syntax on top of that again there will be all the commands on my web page with the directory shell so you can go there and see pretty much everything what happens in this demo space so it's kind of exact copy of the demo space so all this uh uh, binary is ready to go over there, and then the bash history. Bash history for today is 17th, so basically you click over here, and if you want to get the command out of here, so you will get it out. Anyway, so let's get started. Uh, short overview of tomorrow's, of yesterday's, no, not tomorrow's, yes, of yesterday's. So we went through the basics how to create a hello world kind of hello world scripts so you know how to make those scripts we went for the functions we now know what's the variables and what's this uh, magical functions if you put the variables inside inside the curly brackets and what you can do with them so we also touched a little bit redirections in piping and we did quite a lot of exercises to go through all these subjects for today targets we will go through the conditionals and we will also go through the loops so it's my plan but let's see how we'll go through and how intensive it will be so if any question please keep asking on the notes there will be someone also replying to you online while I'm speaking. I'm in kind of speaking head over here, but then there is a team which is behind the scene doing the 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 work on the notes as well. So conditionals. As we told you already, so scripting language is uh, can be considered as a programming language and it has actually all the features of the programming language in this sense. And one of them, of course, uh, how you do the if, else, etc., and how you go for the conditionals. Even if if, else is uh, presented, and we will now touch it just in a few minutes, uh, I have to say that the driven force of this um, checking and verifying something from the command line, it's this double square brackets expression. So important over here, you put the double square brackets on top on, uh, on on the left and on the right, and then you have the expression and important, you have the spaces in between. Otherwise, if no space, uh, Bash will not recognize the syntax and will be given as an error. So everything what happens within the expressions, if it's uh, executed and the exit code is true or success then from bash perspective it's zero and if it's uh, something which is not one uh, which is not zero it could be one two three or etc to 256 it's considered to be false so uh bash and shell and if uh, bash's speciality with respect to the conditionals is it has a number of operators that you can use, for instance, for easy checking, file existence, directory existence, uh, whether the variables is empty or not alike. So I have several selected examples over here, but in order to proceed, so I want to go to the demo right away. So I go to my bin directory and let me demonstrate you let me show you, for instance, that was our previous file, which was the archiving stuff. 
now I want to go further and I want to actually create something which will be uh, doing the more complicated stuff. So what I want to check, I have the file already. So if you want to check this out, please do. And the file is called, no, it's not that one. The file is called tar it. And here is a little bit more than one single line. And let me explain through line by line what that means. So now you know that we are picking up here the uh, the argument, which is given as the argument from the prompt when you execute the script. So I assign this argument to the variable dir. And then I will start using if. So if and else is there. And actually, if and else, very practical and very normal if you have been using some other languages. So the only difference over here that the every single if block needs to be closed with the fi that ends. That's just the norm of the syntax. But otherwise, if you are using if, you can use l if, and then you can use else. So the thing about this uh, syntax over here is that this then it could go to the other line or it could just stay on the same line, but then you need to have the delimiter because from the syntax, uh, from a bash syntax perspective, it's considered to be two different commands. And if you omit this uh, semicolon, then you will get the syntax error. Okay, so let me use it right away in this, uh, no one saying this. And again, uh, this expression in the double square brackets, it will give you either zero or non-zero output. So it's either succeeded or not. And so what happens after, it's up to you. So what do you put this within this block of this if, uh, if conditionals? But condition over here, we will come to this a bit later, can be basically anything. Anything what returns uh, an exit code or anything what gives you some kind of uh, if it's uh, uh, even an empty command can give you something which is uh, kind of uh, from the bash perspective can be considered as a condition. But first of all, let me go with the example of combination if, else, if, else, and then these uh, operators that you can use within the double square brackets. So my first example, if I'm trying that whether the directory which is given here exists. It's essentially for me, it's if, and then the operator within this double square brackets minus D and the directory name. And then I delimit it because it's a standalone com command and then, then comes another command. You can easily put it like, like this. It's just a matter of, uh, of your choice. I prefer more compact way, so I put them on the same line and in my opinion, it's also more readable. So what I'm doing next, my final target is to actually make the tar as far as, as you remember, yeah? And so what I need for the tar, I first I need the archive name. We already went through this tomorrow. So I'm using here a number of common substitutions. So I'm doing the base name. I'm checking, I'm getting out of the deer the uh, name of the directory itself. And then I'm getting also the date. So my kind of new name, which I will be exploiting over here is unique, more or less. Next, what I'm checking. Okay, if this given to me directory does not exist, so it's not actually checking the, whether the directory itself exists or not. It's only checking whether this variable is empty or not. So if you go back to the uh, back to the online material, so this minus z and then something, usually it comes the variable, it doesn't really check whether the variable is defined or not. It's only checking whether this uh, zero or it has some kind of length. So let me show you. I will show you just in a second, actually, when we come back to these uh, uh, examples. But here you see 
what's happening. So if this argument is not given at all from the bar perspective, perspective if uh, no argument is given, this dollar one is does not exist. It's not defined, and beer will be just simply empty. And emptiness from the bash logic that also means that directory uh, that this variable does not exist. And so here I'm checking if it uh, does not exist, then what I'm doing? Then I'm saying that actually dir supposed to be my current directory. So dot from the bash expression, that means that it's the, uh, that stands for the current directory. And then I'm already forming the base name, uh, the archive name based on the my pwd command. So pwd, it's the one which gives you the your current working directory. And so I'm taking the name of my current working directory, and then I'm taking the date again. And here is the chess extension for the for the for, for the archive name. Finally, my final conditional logic would say that if no one of these true, so directory is either uh, argument is either given by directory does not exist or it has never been given, then what will happen? It will happen that actually I should say that this directory does not exist or it's simply empty. Actually, it's not yet correct. We will come to this just in a second. Uh, and then I'm introducing you another one comment which you can use within the script. It's called exit. What will happen if you run exit within the script is that you just leave the script. Whatever comes after exit doesn't matter from the bash perspective. So you will exit the code and nothing happens after. So that's enough for you. It's a kind of just uh, quiet in Python or I don't know, it's when you just don't want to be, uh, want to just uh, close the execution of your of your script. And another one important thing is that you put the exit code. Exit code, as I told you, it could be zero if you want to say that the exit code is successful. So it's important for from the point of view that if you want to be, uh, if your programming part also want to be sophisticated and you want to be able to use your script for the for instance for something else and then you want to be able that uh, you want to make sure that actually if script fails then the if it piped to something else then the other command would know that okay this has failed and then actually could uh, react accordingly so here you are providing the exit code exit code can be as I told you, zero, then that would mean it succeeded. But then in our case, actually, I wouldn't consider that this has succeeded. So that I provide the exit code one. It's just normal. That means that actually something went wrong and it has failed. You can provide 206 if you want to. And usually people will do is that they have a number of exit codes somewhere documented if it's uh, complicated and really huge scripts. Then for every single code, there is a description that what has happened and what how this can be interpreted from the debugging point of view. And then when I'm done with my if condition, then I just close the whole loop, the, the the whole statement. Again, the indentation is not important over here. I do it simply because I want to be code readable, but this is not an error at all from the bash syntax point of view. So it's just to, for the sake of the, for, for, so to say for clarity in this case. And then finally, if I came to this, uh, back to, down to this line, so that means that something has happened already. So, and I'm expecting by, come into this line that at least archive is defined and dir is defined. And what will happen is that my directory 
will have the name which is will be the this variable archive and the directory that will be compressed and archived and that's going to be the one so that's the logic and now let's try it now let's try it so i am in the bin directory our it has the x bit so in my case i can easily run it as is you remember i've told you already previously is that because we have been in the path yeah this the, the last one this demo space bin so in this situation i don't need to put anything i can run the script just like that it's executable it's part of the path and bash will find it for me and run it so let me see what i will get over here so now I should have get something which is called bin, and this is exactly the directory of mine. Uh, I mean, the archived directory of this uh, my current one. Okay, I don't want this, but say I want to try it out in my um, in the root of my works space and then if i want to run something like tar it and provide a directory name so let it be that another one story what will happen actually it happened exactly what's supposed to happen so i've got the tar archive of that story okay so it seems that it works I don't need, of course, the archive of that directory. So I just remove it, clean up after myself. But here is what we've got already. So my next step would be going through the, back to the actual, actual square brackets. And let me do it on the online. So you see like that, it's pretty much working syntax so if i even have this like that so that's going to be a syntax error but then if i i don't know if i'm putting here checking var yeah whatever so it's uh, executed and something has happened in the background what has happened let's try to realize so we can always try to see what was the exit code of the last command and in our case, this double bracket, double square brackets, it's actually in kind of a command execution. Uh, the only thing that this execution, it uh, comes to the down to the uh, checking the whether this condition is uh, true or false. And so let's see what has happened. Uh, var, is it defined or not? Let us check. Echo var. Uh, there is some value over there, but let's start it from the very beginning. So I am unsetting this one, so no value behind this. So var does not exist. And so let's see what the z var will tell us in this case. So it's zero, so it does not exist. It's exactly what z minus z is expecting. So it's true if the length of the string is zero. So non-existing, non-defined variable and empty variable are the same from the from the from the bash perspective. So I'm assigning, for instance, to kind of proof of concept. So I'm assigning a, a variable itself, but it's empty, and it's still gonna be zero. And only after I'm saying some value over here it's going to be said that okay it has actually failed so this directory uh, this variable has been defined and it has some value be careful because in other language if you would say that var is equal zero from the bash point of view the length of this variable is non-zero it's at least one byte so that means that this minus z will give you false and again it doesn't matter what you put over here. It will be still considered the only the length of this variable. So if you want to make sure that you are kind of follow the logic of this uh, uh, operators, then just just take it this into account. So you're working with the not with the definition of the variable, but actually the content of the variable itself. 
saying that, let me go further and see that how complicated this kind of uh, expression could be. So you have a number of the things. So I have demonstrated you already minus D in the same way. If you are checking the file, you can check minus F and say that this does this file exist or not. Take a note on this because they're going to be the uh, they are going to be the uh, the exercise right on this. Then if you want to check this, it's is it readable for you? I express here it's for you, so it's not readable in general, but it's readable by you. So you can push this minus R. And then what else? So all these kind of comparisons, including integers and uh, and uh, just normal lexic. So you can use them within this double square brackets. But regarding the integers, let's say that we will come back to this in yet today. So when we will be considering the arithmetics. So I would definitely say that please uh, use for the integers some other. So you can see that within the loops subject, there will be the arithmetic and there will be introduced the other expression. So just the normal uh, round brackets over here. And so that is way more powerful. And so coming back to the conditionals, I would say that square brackets is mainly for the strings, even though you can put the integers over there. And even though from the historical point of view, actually, and for the sake of compatibility, even those double square brackets, they have implemented all this equal, not equal, less than, less or equal, greater than and greater or equal, etc. But again, uh, don't get confused so you can use them both but i would suggest that you actually from now on you would start uh, distinguish them and so these ones for the strings and then the round ones for the inter integers again uh, a few examples uh, we can use the examples uh, with the logical and and logical or and then we will use uh, negation and we will at some point may use also the grouping so you can have a list of here of working examples it's up to you how you use them uh, we use them i mean those who are writing the scripts they are using quite often and then to demonstrate to you that actually something will may happen and be quite more complex so i am going back to the star it and see that, for instance, if I would like to implement and say that check that directory, it's not only existing, but it's also not empty. So what I'm saying here is that I need another one condition. So if actually can be nested. So let me show you one way to do that. So you can also do it like this. If and then put another condition and say that here I'm testing that it's not empty. So how to do that? You can use known to you uh, common substitution and you can say here L L A. So what LS L A gives you, it gives you a list of all the files and directories, including the hidden ones in the current directory. And if it happens that this directory uh, empty then ls minus l capital a will return your empty list which from the um from the f and expression uh, perspective that would mean that it's just the false thing so what i'm saying here that okay let's put it uh, like that let's put it like that and let's uh, see the logic so if it's if directory exists and if it's not empty then we already do the setup for the archive and then we have to close this uh, internal if condition in the same way it's probably more readable but in the same way if you are already good enough in programming with bash you can actually join those two conditions into one and using the logical end you are saying pretty much the same thing but just within one line
like that. It will work as well. It's your choice. I mean, if you want to make it readable, if you have some colleagues which are not really capable of reading this cryptic syntax, it probably makes sense to do it as a nested. But if you do it for yourself and you are experienced enough, then that should go this way. Okay, you can test it out if you want to, or you can just trust me that this one will work. It's the how to use the complication of this um, of this uh, operator and then negation. So negation would say that, okay, if you put the exclamation mark, let's be, uh, let's make it more noisy. So minus n would give you that directory uh, variable is defined its success. But if I want to still negate it, even a half minus z, so I would put the exclamation mark over here. This will work also. At some point, you may want to use it as exclamation mark, for instance, will be, um, I don't know, in the same way, if you put it before the condition, then that means uh, from the conditional expression point of view. So uh, give me the value of that which is negated. So if it succeeded, if this minus D operator has succeeded, then we put it that it has failed. Or, okay, I think you've got the idea. So sometimes you need this. So now we have this done. And I think, uh, I think I should be ready now to go for the first exercise. So my first exercise of this day, there will be conditionals and I will ask you to do next. So I am actually asking you to work with the Datar IT. So if you uh, think about it, where to get it, you just go over here and you click it and you just download it to your own directory for the sake of playing with that. But anyway, so here what I want to, uh, what I what I want want you to try. So first of all, try to check whether any argument is given. So even though it's a little bit pointless from this uh, programming point of view from this, uh, for this kind of script, but it's not pointless from the starting point of view. So you will learn how to check the number of the arguments. I have it in the material, or you can say that if you remember uh, this variable, it's a system-wide variable. It's existing by default when you run any kind of program, any script in Bash, and it gives you just exactly the number of the uh, the number of the uh, the number of the given arguments. So basically, if you say that it's if it's equal zero, yeah, then you should already come out and be, be decide what to happen. And before doing that, so I'm cleaning it up. Before doing that, actually, I wanted to demonstrate you something which was, uh, say that if you want to compact view of this test operator. So what will happen over here? I mean, the, what will happen over here? That if this exists, you can use you can use this uh, logical and and logical or operator on the command line, and because Bash is mostly about command line, uh, mostly about prompt. So on the prompt, you will not probably using something like if, etc. Even if you can, if then. And even if you can't do, do doing all these kind of uh, things over here, the most popular way to use the if, uh, to use these uh, conditional operators on the command line directly is to using them with the uh, bitwise operator, so with the booleans. And in my case, if I'm checking that if it exists, echo, Okay, let's see if it doesn't. I'm using negation. It does not exist. So 
now you know now you can use also this kind of technique if you want to make it compact but within the script i would say if is correct way to do that so it's more it gives more readability but when you do it from the command line you can simply do it and simplify it and simply do it like this so that's another one hint for the conditionals so let's say and then the last one that i'm expecting you to check that this archive which we're trying to make it does exist okay uh let's go and say that yes 45 it's something that we will come back to this and i will show you how to how to actually this can could be implemented okay several replies already there so let me let me demonstrate what actually you were supposed to be doing so i copy my tar id to the uh -huh. RID, let it be version one. So I'm not using Git here, otherwise that I would just make the comment that uh, would keep adding, but here just for the sake of clarity, so that we can have both versions and open up all, all of them. So I'm now, let's me, I'll make out of this uh, original tar ID something which was requested to do. So this dummy check for the command line argument. So what I'm saying here is that I'm assigning the variable to the dir, and now what I need to I need to make a check that this directory is not is given to me. So it's once again minus z dir over here. And what happens then if it's not correct? So then we are archiving, or let it say that we are putting minus n. And so we are checking if it actually exists. Does it actually exist? Is it existing? So yes, I can say that the directory exists, archiving it. Okay, in the other situation, if this guy is not there, then what I'm saying that having the current directory. And then there was also a request to put the name of that directory. So the easiest would be to put the PVD and PWD, so my current directory, or if we want to have just a name, in case we can do the thing with the base name. like this that should work for the <clears throat> how do we call it arguments check arguments check and then the other one was to check the uh, whether the file does exist so what will happen over here uh, my point was that i don't really want to overwrite already exist in archive and so i need somehow to check this um, i need somehow to check the uh, the archive itself and luckily we have this archive as a variable so there is nothing else to do than just put in this minus f and see whether this exists or not and so we can do this in exactly the same way the only operator will be here minus f which says that check please that this file exists and now one hint for you so i always suggest that you put actually these variables which you put into the test uh, conditional test operator so put them quoted why sometimes those are variables may have some special characters even the space is considered to be special characters and so if you omit this kind of uh, double quotes then what will happen that archive will put on this line for instance uh, a string which would have which will have a, a space and then it will be considered as a kind of additional variable or additional check or whatever and most probably 
Flash will just tell you about the syntax syntax error. So this is why uh, just get started with the with the good practices and so use the archive use use the double quotes within this um, uh, test construct. So and then what I'm doing here that if archive if it exists, I'm saying echo archive already exists. Okay, and then important thing, before I actually close in the whole block, I need to exit because I don't want the uh, whole script go down to that line. So I'm saying here exit and I can put some exit parameter like two. And now if you run this uh, uh, within some script and you are getting these kind of errors, you already can get around with the exit code and say that, okay, this exit two is about this uh, existence of the archive and so that we don't override this. So let's see if it works. Uh, we need to check what we need to check. Tar IT shell. So let's see first the archive of the current directory demo space. Okay, that's correct. Demo space is there. So we assume that at least this part is working. And uh, now what we need to check, we need to check whether the directory is existing or not. So basically if we are trying to, oh, sorry, now I did the wrong thing. So let it let it create, recreate it. And now I'm trying to do the same thing and trying to overwrite exactly the same demo space dot blah, blah, blah. So now let's see what will happen. Now it's actually has checked that this directory is already there. Uh, this file, this archive is already there and nothing has happened. So it has not been overwritten. It's exactly what we were up for. And so let me clean up after myself once again. And so that one is there. I will also add the uh, right answers to the to this node guy so that after awards should be able to to come back to them okay there there okay so on the show we should be good to go further now we are back to the uh, 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 back to the conditionals, but now I want to tell you about something special, which is called the matching operator. So you have here a long text. So, but basically, um, matching operator. This is the functionality which will work only within the only within the double square brackets. So there are some historical notations also for the test operators like single square brackets so the, but this will work only with this modern one way and what it does it's supposed to it can it allow you to use the uh, basically the in the most basic concept you will find whether the part of the string that you are looking for, it's a kind of search word, is actually part of the string which you are trying to match against. And in the worst case, you can go with the regular expressions. Uh, let's see how to have, what's a, what, what you can do. So there are a number of selected operators over here. We call it operators, but actually from the regular expressions point of view, it's the it's a mini language. I mean, if you ever met this, if you ever tried this with Python, for instance, or if you were tried it with the grep, so every single uh, setup it has somewhat um, special syntax, but most of the things more or less uh, are the same. So the uh, most of these operators, most of these characters, or most of these special characters that you use inside the regular expressions, more or less the same. I will not go deeply into this. So it's a subject for the 
for the book. It's a subject different for the different lecture. My only point here that matching operators is existing, and my point here that I will show you how you can use it within the bash with the several examples. My first example would be, for instance, let's see that I want to verify that the email which is given to me by somebody, okay? So I go to my stream. Email is given to me by somebody is actually an email. So now I have a variable and now let me check it. So what will happen? I first I need to create some kind of regular expression. Okay, so let me put first these guys round brackets down. So that should be perfectly enough if there is something before hat, hat and then there is something after hat. So this is the very simplest way to check whether this given one is the actual example. So uh, let's say that I am satisfied with this kind of verification. So I'm not checking the domain names. I'm not checking that the user existence, etc. That's already too complicated. It's not for the or the script, but then let's see what will happen, <clears throat> whether this will be executed correctly or not. So in my case, yes, it succeeded. So the email was correct, but then if I'm trying to something which is not looking, which is not looking like a email, then let me try it once again. Now it's not succeeded. So that's the way to use this kind of regular expressions. In the same way, the easiest way, if, for instance, I still want to have this email in the previous format, and I just want to check whether this variable has, for instance, auto inside. For me, it would be enough if I just put the auto name. So my string, which I'm matching against, will be compare it with this auto and this operator will try to find me every single entries of auto in the email. So now it says that, okay, correct, it has been found. And so you've got the idea how to use this matching operator. And <clears throat> let me show you one thing. For instance, you remember while we're playing with the append with uh, how to make the path, uh, how to make the additions to the path variable. So let me go to the bin functions and I will add another one function over here, which we can use later. We can make it more generic and we can later make it to work with any variable, but at this point, let it be path. So my point is, okay, I can expand the path variable as many times as I want to. But what I don't want to happen, if that, for instance, I want to add yet another path to the bin directory, uh, but if it already exists there, then we should skip it somehow. So my point, if I wouldn't be using the matching operator, I wouldn't be using, for instance, something like echo grep, okay? That would work. Let me check it out. So, for instance, if I know that my path is demo space bin, yeah, path something like demo space bin, or I can put it even in such a sophisticated way, sophisticated way, so I know it's home demo space bin. This is what I have added on the very first day, okay? And now what I'm doing is that I want to check that this demo space bin is part of my variable. Without the uh, matching operator, I would use grep. So what I would do, I would echo, echo original path, and I would say that please grep for me, uh, that one that I have designed just recently. Okay, and grep will tell me exactly, this guy is there, this guy exists. And you can see that actually, we can even say that even if we 
get rid of the uh, output, we can still get this output, uh, the exit code. So the exit code in our case was succeeded. Okay, nice. But then how to do the same thing with the matching operator? So let me do it the way we do it with the functions. So that would be as simple as that. So I need only the path itself. Then I need that matching operator over here. And then I need the actual the string which I am comparing against. That's it. And the function will pretty much work only within, with the uh, bash functionality. So we don't need any external program like grep or not even echo. So we just do the like this. So that's one of the demo, how to use it already right away. Uh, and that's also the way to show you that actually there are some, uh, there are different approaches how to solve it. And you can find them also when you Google definitely for the all kind of uh, bash solutions. So you will find these different approaches. Just, uh, just be aware that all of them work and maybe the question of compatibility it's but uh, also the question if if you want to implement everything with a bash or if you want to use these utilities which are around and then we come back to one thing to my first example uh email let me do it in such a way that i actually email is the one which is supposed to be correct but let me check my regular expression which i have used for the email and remember at the very beginning there were the round brackets in the regular expression round brackets would mean grouping so what that mean from the uh, from perspective when you start using the matching operator matching operator will have such an array which is called bash rematch so we don't know yet anything about arrays they are coming only the on the study day number three so it's going to be tomorrow but uh, let me say that they are in the bash and so here is the first the first yeah the first touch of this one so what will happen over here when we assign this to email and regular expressions and then if we go and check it like this so what this matching operator will do for us it will find this one and this one and actually it will be able to distinguish them and it put the, uh, them to the uh, to the array and so we will have number of elements in this array elements zero of this bash rematch it's going to be the whole sentence and then element one is going to be the content of the first group and the element two is going to be the content of the second group and vice versa i mean it will be as many elements as many groups you have over here let me show you what i mean so what i actually exactly want to here to do here is that i want to output the bash so the easiest way to output the array is using this syntax so by now don't go deeply into this just copy paste it when you will be playing with that so let's see what will happen and now you will see that actually this has been done and those variables have been assigned. And now you see that I've got three different fields over here. And I can use, for instance, if I want to use the only the first one, so I can say that, okay, give me not everything, but only, for instance, the name of the guy. So that's gonna be, and then if I want only domain, that's gonna be like that. It's fantastic that it works actually so you definitely wouldn't expect this kind of uh, from the bash functionality and if you are familiar with the regular expressions so that's the that's the basically that means that you're good very that you've got very kind of efficient tool in your hands uh, 
Uh, I wanted to mention also one thing with them, uh, if and else. Uh, what this thing is, is that reminder to you. When we are talking about condition which comes over here, when we are talking about condition which comes over here, uh, this condition can be basically anything what can bring you true or false. In this, the same way, like I'm using, for instance, test operator over here, in the ex exactly the same way I can use I can use pink command or any other command. And if result of that command will bring me something, then will be do if it succeeded. Uh, right after this, if if it's not succeeded, then it will be in an else. So take away message that basically any condition, anything which will bring you as a condition, we will also we will use it later on for the uh, for the for instance for the for the uh, arithmetic operators. So we will also use if and arithmetic operators, and you will see that actually yes, if can accept anything what you want. So, but here I think it's now time for the exercise session. And now we will take this conditional operator and play with that. Now what I want from your side is that you will spend your next 15 minutes building a regular expression. It's not uh, easy, not at all. Please use the uh, slides over here and check them, check the examples and check the examples that we have used also uh, from the online and then try it out and even if it looks like it's very simple it may actually start bringing you the errors and it's maybe even painful because actually playing with the regular expression it has never been easy it's the it's the thing itself so it's a kind of mini language and understanding how that works is the to go okay so now we will have joint break and exercise so remember to stretch your legs or stretch something whatever you want to and then we go back to the at 13 32 so let's say that 15 minutes plus 10 minutes break 13 32 and then the exercise is coming over here otherwise you can start doing already this one so I'm talking about the star IT that we keep developing with you. Okay, now the floor is yours. I am muting myself. And if any question, please don't hesitate to shoot them. Hopefully the break is over. If you can hear me, then just let me know that it can hear me somehow. So shut me on the notes or somewhere. So let's get back to this uh, validation. So now, uh, what was the problem? The problem was that they had to make some kind of regular expression which would take, which would make the validation of the directory path. So I know that for the uh, for the bash scripting, it's usually not that. Uh, this validation is not really that often. Thousands of people they really don't really care about this. But as a former, for instance, I've been developing for the web quite a lot in some recent times. So you can see that actually there are all, everything what comes out from the from the outside somehow. It could be the argument. It could be the uh, giving the input on the interactively. I would suggest that you definitely do check because you never know which uh, who will use the script, where and how it will be used. So whenever something comes to the hand, especially if you want to remove something, if you want to rename something, if you want to move something, then definitely make sense to check that is it actually the valid, uh, the valid path or the valid name or is it the valid thing at all. So what we are doing here is one we need to create a regular expression so that wasn't easy at all so i must say that uh, definitely if you have never played with the regular expression then having this layer something like this would definitely go 
with would will take some time over here so my example over here ready to go that i have just put to the data so my regular expression is looking like this one and let me explain what's happening over here within the regular expression i'm saying that uh, within these brackets that what comes that should be either a digit a letter a capital letter it could be a dot it could be underscore it could be slash so that's the kind of and these uh, square brackets in this case they will just indicate that that's the uh, any combination of, of these characters and then on top of that i'm saying that it should be plus so it should be at least one or many and then I'm limiting it. So I'm saying that hat at the very beginning, that means that it should start with this and the dollar sign at the very end, that means that it should end with this. So there should be nothing else except those ones. Okay, that should be good enough already for checking out that that's the valid path. And then how implement this? So this, what you do usually if you, do the implementation something like this so we can of course increment it into some some of this checking right here but then hmm, we can do a separate also so for instance let me do it actually let me just increment it into the incorporate it into the existing one so here i'm checking that uh, directory existing but actually before the Thing, I have to check that directory is correct. So this can be taken off. And then off, then, so here is my consequence of checking list. So I'm checking that directory given to me is actually a valid directory path. So second, I'm checking that the directory itself exists and third one i'm checking that directory is not empty so that should go like this and the regular expression over there so that was the that was the whole thing so let me let me copy paste it to you over here and so next time you know how to use it where am I? Mm. On the arithmetic. So the next will be for us the, while I'm doing this, I'm speaking also, the next will be for us the arithmetic. Uh, strictly speaking, bash is not really, uh, can't be really proud of arithmetic. So when you are talking with the arithmetic, so like this yeah so let it be there for the sake of <clears throat> documentation so when we are speaking about arithmetic in general we are speaking only about uh, integers so these are good for all kind of indexing it's uh, good for making all kind of counters but nothing else so if you are looking something to work with a float point then you definitely should go also for some specific math uh, applications or at least look for the uh, libraries for the Python, PyScript and other NumPy and others. So, but with respect to this uh, plus one plus one, one plus two or 100 uh, uh, multiplied by something. So that should be good enough to do at least this one. If you want to count the line numbers, if you want to count the character numbers, if you want to make the indexing within the array. So this bash is capable of doing. And there is a special expression over here. Uh, these are uh, round brackets, round brackets like this. And everything what happens within the round brackets it's gonna be interpreted as the arithmetic expression. So when I'm saying that n plus m, Bash would expect that there is a variable called n and there is the variable called m, and I want to see the sum of those two variables, okay? And uh, as comparing to the 
for instance, this uh, square brackets double, there is no need for the space over here. And also as comparing to the square brackets, there is no need for the dollar sign. You can put it, it's not a syntax error, but it's not a syntax error either if you omit them. So just remember everything what is later over here, it will be interpreted as a variable. And then what will happen? So let's say that I want to assign n equal to and m equal, I don't know, five. If I do it like this, uh, you will see nothing. Why? Yes, uh, the arithmetic action actually has been done. It has been counted, but it has not been saved to any variable or it has not been printed to the output. So if you want to print the output of this uh, action, so you have to put the dollar sign and then do something, like for instance, echo. And this way you get the output. Or if you want to assign another one or a variable, like, uh, I don't know, variable P or variable sum, summation. So that's going to be also like this. Then you echo S and you will see echo, not ego. It's going to be like that. And here is a number of selected operators. What you can do, so take a look at them. And we will start using them right away. And one of the particular examples, so you can do the incrementation, plus minus, exponent, and then multiplication, truncating. And so if you're dividing, for instance, two numbers, yeah, so you will get the integer still. So if you even think that, okay, n, m is five and n is two, then I can divide them. So I can still see that actually this is gonna be the integer. So they will be rounded to that or another direction. So, uh, but you can also get the reminder over here. Uh, this is that much about logic, about this arithmetics inside the bash. So I don't really think we still, we need to tell way more because what we need to, what we need to do is that we need to uh, be ready to go for the uh, upcoming loops. But before that, I would like to use this section to introduce you something which is called a read command. So let me do it in this way. Like I have a prepared command in the bin, which is called read sh. Let me try it out with you. So what I'm doing here, I'm saying that please read for me something which comes from the keyboard from you essentially into the variable e i n t one and i'm also saying that my prompt before this i n t one should be this one okay and then i'm just using that variable to echo this this is that simple but that's a demonstration how to use it so it has nothing yet to do with the integer but but you will see shortly that uh, it is useful because we will start doing now the exercises soon. So what will happen over here? Give me an integer, please. So I give something like, hmm? give me another integer. Okay, still integer. Oh no, so too early. So you see something like that. In a sense, read, is nothing specific. I mean, if you go to the manual page and see the read, it has very few options. So it has a time limit, for instance. You can say that there's something like minus, uh, minus R in order to avoid some special characters. You can put the minus T and say that, uh, that the time limit for the waiting would be 10 seconds, or let it be even four. And then if you can even say that uh, you can hide everything what's been typed if you are kind of curious and you want to request for some secrets. So let's see what will happen if I do it like this. Give me an integer, please. So if I type, there will be nothing. And actually the timeout has been now has been now gone. And so nothing has happened. So read again. So that was your integer is like that. 
fine. And then if I wait for four seconds, it will just break me out and I'm done. So we're pretty much now ready, I think, to go for the actually uh, next example. Ah, I want to make one demo for you. I have a demo called Gaussian. There is a story behind that. So the Gaussian, you know, this famous mathematician, and he was a genius. And so at some point in his uh, classroom, when he was kind of quickie enough to answer all the questions the teacher was giving, so the teacher told him that, please count me all the numbers, a summation of all the, to give me a sum of all the numbers from one to 100. And the teacher was quite surprised that when the kind of 10 years old boy was in a couple of seconds uh, saying the right uh, the, the right answer. So the problem over here is that the Gaussian actually find out how to make the summation. And his method was that he was taking the uh, 1 and 99, 2 and 98, 3 and 97, etc. And he have realized that actually there are 50 pairs that would give you 100. And then there is 50, uh, which is just in the middle. And so you easily can count that actually. Oh, summing 1 to 100 will give you 5050. So, but it's uh, that's the, just the history. But then actually, we will use it for the sake of uh, trying the arithmetics uh, within the bash. So, what I'm doing here, I'm starting to use the arithmetics right away in this script. So, first, I'm checking that actually this variable, which stands for the number of arguments. So this is the special variable, and I think we were talking about this already earlier. And here I was mentioned this already. So that's a number of uh, selected variables, and one of them is special one when you give this number of input parameters. Okay, and so what I'm saying here, if this is exactly one, then we take the n from the command line. And if it's not the case, if no arguments is given, or if more than one argument is given, or if not equal to one or whatever. So what I'm saying here that please read this number from the uh, from the prompt. And let's make it interactive. And then when it's done, we already do the actual summation. And you can see that actual summation happens within one line. I'm printing and counting it just like that. So in my case, uh, using this uh, Gaussian approach, I just using this formula. So n, n plus one divided by two. And you can see that I can even use within this double round brackets, the round brackets themselves. So this is made to put the priorities to grouping so that this actually arithmetic action arithmetics will happen first and then after that will happen the the rest so there will be multiplication and and division uh this is to tell you to show you that actually something still works and so let me try the gauss you can try it on your own as well if you just copy it from the web page so give a positive number and let it be 100 and so so you are getting actual correct answer saying that a Gaussian boy was pretty genius, yes, at that time, at his age. In the same way that if I put the first to the line, so or let it be 101, whatever. So you can see that actually I'm still getting the correct answer. So now what I was about to demonstrate here, along with the read command, along with this uh, uh, check for the input parameters, for the number of input parameters. I'm also actually demonstrated to you quite nice techniques. So you can both check the input parameters, and if nothing has happened over there, then you go and ask interactively. Okay, so that's the demo, nicely looking, hopefully. Another one thing which I was thinking to tell you, <clears throat> actually, 
I was just met it tomorrow because I was developing one script and then uh, realized that, okay, I never told the, uh, the course participants how to check the syntax. There is this minus N with bash. So if you want just to check the syntax, but do not execute the code, so please make a note for yourself. So use the bash minus N. So let me, for instance, break it somehow. Yeah, it's our own syntax and see what will happen with the minus. Where, so you will get the error without actually executing the code, which is just nice. And you even get the line number where the code has been, uh, where code is failing. So you can already see what's exactly is happening over here on the line seven. Okay, so just to make a note for the yourself bash minus n that will probably save your time somehow somewhere when you're doing these things already for the production. Now it's next session, uh, interactive session. So let's uh, try to look at the arithmetics. I don't think we really need that much time over here, but I still give you 15 minutes or let it be 10 actually because uh, oh, it's happening. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the only thing that's, uh, again, if you are uh, quick enough with the read commands, and you should be probably quick enough because they, you just use this read and do what's, uh, what it's supposed to do, then if you are quick enough, a kind of advanced task for, your, for you would be check that given input is an integer. So it's the continuation of my previous uh, exercise. So if you want to play with the regular expression, then you can find out the way how to check that actually input which you get from the prompt is what you're expecting. Okay, now the time is yours. And now let's say that we give it 10 minutes and then we continue at 14.01, I guess, yeah. Yes, and we probably need a second break. So let's continue then at 14.10. Oh, no, let it be 10. Oh. I'm muting myself, but yes, you know where to ask the questions if you want, if you have any. Okay, coming back online. So I think the simplest would be that just if I will show you how I have done it, I will just copy paste it directly to the notes and they will be there. So the script to implement this kind of arithmetics is pretty much straightforward. I mean, from the programming, point of view and the point was here just to find out how to use the right syntax for the uh, for the bash specifically so what I'm doing here I'm go through the asking for the uh, read ones so if I I am asking with the read command the two variables so one is integer one another is an integer two so you can name it the way you want to it's just the for the sake of convenience. And then I do the comparison of using the if, else if, and else statements. And inside of this, I'm using the the um, uh, the arithmetic expressions. So here, basically, logic is pretty simple. The more kind of uh, advanced it was to check that the number is actually a number or the given input is actually a number. So what I've done here is that I have prepared the, the uh, regular expression and was comparing that is what I receive from the user, something which is uh, contains only digits or it could be also the negative one. 
just to make sure and be more complete on this one. And so I'm using this one condition. So this would go somewhere right after the read. And if it's okay, then I will just continue to the rest of the code. Or if it's not okay, I will just make the exit in the previous examples that was already there. So these are two, uh, two these last ones. Now let's get to the uh, one another one real part i mean taken uh, if i count like conditionals like one essential part of any language then the loops is another uh, essential part of any language and bash has several implementations of a loop it also has this while until loop and um, again Remember that for loop in bash is something specific. It's not what you expect in the C style, even if the C style is also there. But since the bash has been initially a kind of uh, scripting thing for the admin administrators and for the advanced users, so what it can do the best, it can do it can work with the files and the directories. And you will see the example why this way. And then it can also work directly with the with the input parameters. So what uh, I think I will just jump uh, directly to the four uh, examples. So my first example will be go through the every single parameter on the line. So if I tell you that, for instance, if I'm creating some file, any file, for example, yeah, I'm starting it pretty much with the same way like you would start any other, any other bash file, and then says, for instance, I want to go through the loop. If I say for some index variable in the list, and here I'm having a list, list could be a for instance, item one, item two, etc. And then I'm saying, please do that. And then when it's do, when it's done, then just done. For the sake of compactness, I'm usually putting the do as well here. It's in the same way, like with the if statements, I put the then over there. And here you do with the variable. Uh, I so basically it becomes item one, item two, etc., one by one. But in case of bash, you can simply omit this list one. What will happen over here? You remember I was telling you that this uh, dollar sign and the uh, number sign is the number of the arguments given to the from the command line and then those arguments are like one two three etc and there is another one variable which is called dollar sign and hat where do i have hat it's here so which actually a list of all of those variables at once so these are the only three or these are the only the range of variables which you're supposed to know when you're working with the input parameters. And what will happen actually here in this construct that this for loop in bash by default will simply go through all these uh, for the variable, this one. So it simply go through one, through two, through three, etc. And so every single item over here will be like this. So we have ready to go script. Let's try it. So I say that we can even make it more for the sake of clarity. So let's say that this uh, and no, we can't really say anything else. So let it be like that. So what's happening here? So I have, so once again, change mod plus X. And I'm not in the bin, so I have to put the essential explicitly path and let's see what will happen. If no arguments, then no output. But if there is some argument, 
two, three, one, two, three, for instance. You see, I will get the arguments back. A, B, C, D. I will get the arguments back. In the same way, if it's A, B, 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 A, B, D, F, G, C, R, T, Y, D, Y, blah, 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 blah. So I will get these arguments back to my line. So that's already something. So now you've got the proof that actually by default four will go through all these items and will do something which you think is reasonable. So I have, I think I have one example for SH. So what am I doing here? I'm pretending I'm somewhere in the directory where there are lots of shell files. And so uh, my next step will be actually to work with those files. You saw in the previous step that if I omit completely this part in and list, then it's going to be the input arguments given to the file given to the script which is running currently but another case if you give the argument if you give no the argument or actually even if you give the argument but then if you put the list explicitly then what will happen over here bash will consider that these are the file names mm -hmm. So if you want to expand, for instance, and take this uh, with a star and wildcard and see that actually uh, all the names, all the all the files with the extension .sh shell will be listed over here. So if they are not found, you will get their message that nothing has been found. But if they are found, they will be proceeded one by one. So what will happen next? It will pick up the first file with the extension sh and we'll go for it so this small script does nothing except that it's just the grab out the uh, the empty lines like that and then it what will does further so it will just uh, grab also the she banks so basically what i'm trying to grab out of this uh, sh files it's only the comments so let's see what will happen if I go to bin, well, if I will try it from here, I will get the error message. Uh, and no, that was. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So if I go to the bin, yeah. So actually I had one uh, SH file, so this is why I didn't get the error message. So that was the just the recently created example. But if I go to the bin and if I will run exactly the same file, so you can see that actually my list of shell files is already about a dozen of them so you can see that i've got the all the comments except the shebangs and then the something which has real comments but it all this stuff which comes from there just one by one so that was a proof for you that yes by default bash will recognize this kind of list as a list of files it doesn't mean that their for loop will end like here, like here, like this, like here. So you can still work with the items and put the list to this for loop in any way. So anything what can produce a list can be used with a, uh, with this notation. So quite often you can use, for instance, uh, bind command. So you will find the files or directories and then you will do with them something. Quite often you can also use something like brace expansions. I never mentioned this, but there is a brace expansion. So for instance, if I want a list from one to 10, yeah, what will happen over here? So Bash will automatically generate me a list from one to 10. If I want a list from eight to 
set the uh, node like this. So Bash will automatically generate the list of that. So if I want to make something with the, this list, for instance, for item in the list, and then do, you can see that actually I can type also the for from the command line, and it's just normal techniques, and people do this. Do, and then I will do something, nothing specific, so I still just echo them. And I can say that even, for instance, the item is, and then I put done. So just remember, if you put everything in one line, just remember this uh, command uh, delimiters. So you need the semicolon at the very end of every column, at every at the, at the end of every uh, at the end of every command. So here you see that I have listed every single element separately. If you want to do something else with those elements, just do it. Just it's up to you. So in the same way, this list can be A, A, D, D, R, D, Y, and blah, blah, blah. So everything what you want to be on the list or it happened to be on the list, it's going to be on the list and you can proceed with that. So that's the easiest part of this for loop. Then as I promised you, so there was another one approach to the for loops, and this is called the C style approach. C style is known to you. So I'm pretty sure that if you've been working with the other languages, so you know what this stands for. So this one is not that often actually used in Bash. It's there, and actually I pretty much sure that even the advanced users maybe have never used that or have never heard about this C style loop and bash. But I mean, if you at some point need this, then just feel free to use it. The usage is pretty simple. So there is the starting point. First of all, it's known to you uh, arithmetic expression, uh, round, uh, round brackets. Then you start with the one. When you put the condition when one till one is um, less or equal n, and you have to define the n, or you have to say it explicitly over here, and then you do the normal incrementation. And actually, this is what will happen if you do the uh, normal math. And this C style loop has appeared also as part of Bash when this uh, double uh, round uh, brackets notation has appeared in the Bash. So so we, I don't think I want to tell you any more on this. I would rather prefer that you go to do the, um, to do the exercises. Yeah, one note. So for just a normal command, in a sense, this one, this construct is nothing else, not just a command. Yeah. And so I want to do everything what I want. If I want to redirect the output of for loop, I do it like that. So if I want to redirect to a file, file for loop, it'd be that like that. It's gonna be there. So now I can take a look like output of my for loop has been redirected over there. In the same way, if I want to send it to as a pipe to another command, then we can do as well this way. Uh, in the same way, you can work with the, mm, what? I mean, if you want to put back something to the loop, so that's gonna be like that. So pretty much normal command operators it can be used for any other command can be also applied to the four loops and then the other loops but now let's get back to the for loop and now let me print for you the next exercise so what i am expecting from you right now is that you do a number of dummy files a number of dummy files and then actually rename them. So the issue here is more or less uh, copy pasted from one of the example. 
in the material so you can find it out uh, somewhere here i guess yes so we i didn't i've done this for the conversion and actually there is the move as well so what i want you to start running is that i want to those create those files and then implement the script that will go through all these files one by one and make a renaming so the original name should remain the same what only needs to be done that this extension which is originally in the capitals should become the small ones that should be quite well, simple so but still uh, I don't think we need actually even 15 minutes. Just copy paste the example and play with that. I think the, even the 10 minutes should be pretty much good stuff for that. And then we will be well on time. So let's say that we are back to the stuff 1438. Yeah, coming back already to the... So the what we've been doing. I guess it was rather quite simple, or it should be. I expect that it should be already quite simple for you. So let me put the right answer and a little bit of explanation. So what has happened here? You see that I'm from from the command line, I'm just running touch. So I'm creating the number of files. So from the bash perspective, this brace condition, brace expression will just give me files from one to five. Try it on the all. And then the bash script itself. So what I'm saying here that go through all the files with the extension with the capitals TXT, assign it to the F and do it one at a time. So we move move all the very far every single file name and here we are using already the bash syntax for the variables where i can easily remove one extension with another one done you can use it anytime anywhere from command line or making scripts etc very useful when we are working for instance with the jpeg files and very useful when you are working with the well, especially with the graphics, I found that when I'm using this display or convert comments, when I can just the go through whole the uh, whole the directories full of those files and do all of them at once easily. Okay, so my next stop would be the while loop. <clears throat> it's interesting. I mean, it's while, it's until. And so the same thing that it's uh, while the condition is uh, uh, returning zero status. So while it's uh, succeeded, then we use while and this loop will continue. And until is the same way, but when the condition returns non-zero status. So basically when it fails. And one of the example, for instance, let me try the Gauss but I say real wire in a sense that I'm just making for you pretty much the same situation like we did with the original Gauss simulation, but except we don't really use the numbers, so we don't really use the formula by Gauss, but we are using the straightforward direct summation. So what I'm doing here is that I'm expecting the n variable from the command line so i'm saying that my original one will be one so beginning and so i'm going through the loop with the rf matrix so till my variable my counter i mean is less than the the this one number given to me from the prompt do the summation so here this formula says that s is actually, well, we can assign S equal zero. Mm -hmm. And so we can say that from very beginning, we just start the summation, every single iteration of this loop, what I'm doing is that I'm adding this I to the S and then I'm doing the incrementation. 
and this way I am getting from n from 1 to n. So that should be very simple. The only thing that I have done something new here, you can see that actually assigning the variables can be done within one line and even with no telemeters from the syntax point of view, it's completely fine. So let's see what's going on. Change mode plus X, it's in the bin. So it's there and they, I want to see the 100. Okay, I want to see something like 1 million. And now let's um, see that how much time it takes. In uh, Linux, there is this utility called time, which can tell you what's the execution time of the command. So you can see that if we go down to the million or something, it's already 10 millions. It will already quite take a lot of time. I mean, well, I can't really wait for that. So let it be just 1 million. I'm saying you here that actually different approaches and let me run exactly the same. But you remember where we were using the formula uh, by Gaussian and it's way faster. What's the... Uh, so what's the takeaway message from here that actually the algorithm that you are using really matters. So the exactly the... Uh, answer is exactly the same it's correct but then the execution time is way more different so one other thing that can be done with the while and this is where the while is used quite often here you see it's when you're working with the files so what usually is being done you send the file to the standard input of the while loop and then it comes the read common in action. And with the read, you can do lots of things. I mean, you can read it from the prompt as one integer, uh, as one single uh, variable, but you can also do the read the whole line or even make the line division. So read is quite powerful. And when you start working with the files and when you start implementing some kind of real uh, programming stuff for the while, you will realize it pretty much. So what else I'm introducing here in this script? It's the IFS. IFS is nothing more than just the default delimiter. It's installed, it's used everywhere. So by default, it's just the uh, backslash N. So which means, uh, let me see, can I even see it somehow? Yeah. Uh, that means that uh, in my case, it's just the new line, but you can redefine it. And redefinition of this one will give you actually lots of abilities. So let me see that I have uh, prepared a file for you, which is quite real. These are the students. Okay, so let me see what's there. Uh, that's a list of students I picked up just reverse.fi. And so that's the list of students from 2018 per university. So you see the number of universities and number of students, male and female students. So if I want to, for instance, do something with every single line, but not only with every single line, I can, I want also to do something with every single field separately. So what I do in this case, I know that separator over here, semicolon, it's the standard syntax of CVS file, CSV files. In your case, that could be something else, but here I'm using it just an example. So I'm redefining this variable and say here that actually my telemeter is going to be the semicolon. And what happens over here, if I don't skip this uh, backslash, then syntax would be broken and uh, and the inter will be interpreted by bash at the end of the line and so that's going to be the error so this is why i have to use this backslash and this works as a quote in the same way you can put of course the quotes over there but most 
uh, in most examples, you will see this backslash and then the code. So I'm just backslashing, but actually the character it comes to the IFS, IFS would be this semicolon. And now it comes the turn of the read command. And the read command, what it does, saying that this one is two limiter, it grabs every single line and divide them one by one according to this delimiter. And so we say here that this F1, it's gonna be the field one. So in this case, it's gonna be this one, actually this one, including the quotes. So the whole field, the F2 is going to be this one. Then F3 is going to be this one. F4 is going to be, because no F5 here, F4 is going to be the rest of this file. So whatever comes after F3 will be the F4. So that means that you have to know the format of your file. And if you want to work with the format of your file, then be specific and be precise, actually check well in advance that uh, all these fields are marked in the order and all these fields are actually uh, the way you want. And then after all, you can use those variables separately, one by one, and you can skip some of them. You can use uh, some of them for the sake of uh, summation, etc. So here I'm just printing them out. And so one more touch here. So please welcome the printf command. So the printf command is nothing else than the C style printf. So if you know how to program in the, it's in Python in the same way, uh, except that in Python you have to put it in the in the brackets. Uh, but uh, C style is working like this. So you are defining the format of the outputted variable, and then you define another one format. I mean some text, then format of that variable another text and format of that variable, et cetera. And then basically you just make the formatted string the way exactly you want. It's really powerful. I would say that most of the people all the time are using this echo, which is completely for uh, okay. And it does the job for you uh, probably nine times of 10, but sometimes you want to make a real nicely formatted output. So, I go to the bin file, and I was thinking that I still have some while example to show you. So this while was actually from here, except that I have added this F5. And so let's see what will happen. So I'm expecting the file from the command line. This says you this dollar one, and then that will be submitted over here and given to the standard inputs. So let's see that this student's, student's file is here. So what I'm saying that please use while shell in my case, and then mm -hmm. while shell. then this one students. And let's see what has happened. So you see that I have actually got the fields and but also there came some stuff which was originally in the file but i don't really wanted this because these are the uh, these are the just normal comment for the csv file and these are the empty line and these are the header and so there are several ways to get rid of them and now you will have 10 minutes to actually try to do that well, I will stay here for longer, but we have official 10 minutes of the left uh, of the exercise. And so my exercise for you, the last one for this day, will be pick up my file while.sh and use it uh, so that to count the total number of students. So the total number of students, if you can see, that's the field number three. So basically what I want you, I want you to two steps. Get rid of this one, empty line, and the header somehow the way you want. I have uh, introduced several approaches over here on the line. And then grab this one and make the summation. 
So now, basically, you already have the Gauss, you have the while SH, so you know more or less where to grab this piece of uh, uh, programming and get them together. And so let's say that the next one is for the 10, maybe 15 minutes, but I will stay here for a bit longer. So if you are still curious and still want to continue, so I'll be here uh, to give the answer. Otherwise, I will just put the output, the right answer just in 15 minutes online and so you will see the result okay the floor is yours and let's say we are running a little bit late but we will be but let's say zero seven that's the end of this exercise and basically the end of the whole day and then we will continue tomorrow at the same time okay the final remark to anyone who has yet stand so if any question, please ask. But here I'm going to put the answers for the last exercise. And otherwise, I'll see you hopefully tomorrow. So if you need any explanation, here you go. What I've done, I've used this while script that I have already explained. The only thing that I've done that I have got rid of the thing which I didn't like. So basically I've checked that if the field one is not looking like this, so I was expecting that this, there are only numbers and only the quotes, double quote, what, what, so what could be there. Then everything else I was just making summation, actually this is not correct, so that should be in the field number three. Okay, not five. And then when it's done, I have just printed it out. I have also introduced here the another approach uh, using the process substitution, but actually just remember that I have never told you about this, so you can just keep it. Oh, I keep it over here for those who are you as advanced, but actually it's yet another way to do the, the same thing. Okay, otherwise, thank you for the participating today. If you have any feedback, please leave it back where, and then otherwise, Tomorrow at 12 o'clock, we will continue with the how to work with the inputs, how to work with the uh, traps. Then I probably will have chance to tell you about the arrays and how to put the here documents. But anyways, see you tomorrow.